Close your eyes and I'll kiss you Welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. Today's review is the third Fully Wen fountain pen generously donated by Joel Terrell for review and to give away. I would like to remind all of you watching and participating in these giveaway contests that your chances of winning are extremely good. Considering each of these videos only gets about 300 views and about 25 comments, so your chances of winning are 1 in 25. Try to get those odds at a track. I'm going to Hawaii! I'm going to Hawaii! It's falling back. I'm not going to Hawaii! So comment away, folks, and you could win a pen. And yes, the contest is open to anyone around the world. This is the fully win fountain pen of the future. This is the way fountain pens will look in 2037 because this is the fully win 2037. Let's take a trip 17 years into the future when we're all living in bubbles, sending paper letters written with fountain pens instead of emailing each other, and trying to explain to our 17-year-olds about the plague years when they were born. <laughs> right now. <laughs> Reminds me of uh, The Martian, where he's laying out all of the resources he has. Full of wind, 2037. I've seen this pen as well. Again, another one from Bobby Pens. Yes, I've seen. Oh, look at that resin. I have seen uh, Chris Rapp's review of this pen and uh, had it in my cart a few times. Interesting section. That's a little condensation because the package is still a little bit cold from being in my mailbox. Let's keep all these together here. Okay, here we are with the Fully Wen 2037. As you saw in the unboxing from back in March, this pen was part of five pens given to me by Joel Terrell for review and to give away. When looking at pens, I usually examine the nib under my loop, clean the pen out by running soapy water through the section, and then disassemble the pen to rinse it and dry it. Then I will ink the pen and use it for a day or two, and then do the writing sample without doing anything to the nib. If I see a pen needs some tweaking in terms of the wetness or a little bit of smoothing, I'll do that after the writing sample is filmed. But sometimes, as with this pen, when I examine the nib, I notice the tines are misaligned. It isn't really fair to even try to write with the pen in this condition, so I'll, I'll do a slight adjustment necessary to get the pen tines in alignment so it, so it can be written with. This pen was very much out of alignment it took quite a bit of time to get it in a shape that I felt would write. The smaller number five nibs don't generally respond quickly or easily as a number six size nib does just because they tend to be stiffer due to being smaller. So that's just a note to viewers that this nib is not in the out-of-box condition. What I'd like to do today is to look at the parts and features of this pen do some size comparisons, and show some measurements, and then do a writing sample. And please stay tuned until after the writing sample, where I'll discuss what I like and what I don't like so much about this pen. I'll also let you know how you can win this very pen. So let's get started. There are a few striking features of this pen right from the start. The first thing that struck me out of the box was the chatoyancy of this acrylic. 
The photographs of the pen on Bobby's Etsy store show the swirls, but don't really give a true picture of the, the depth, the translucency, and the chatoyancy of this beautiful resin. This model is not available in this finish at the moment, and only available in two finishes on Bobby's Etsy store, and two different finishes on Bobby's eBay store. This acrylic rivals many of the resins by Pen BBS, which have the best quality and variety of acrylic resins of any fountain pen. You don't agree with me? <laughs> Tell me why I'm wrong in the comments below. The second thing that jumped out at me was the very unique shape of this pen. From the top where we see a flat chrome metal finial in this very interesting cap flare. Then we have some acrylic resin and then a rather thick clip band which holds a very interesting clip which is very springy and very usable and has this cool little cup at the end of the tip with a faux pearl. This clip is quite a relief after the last fully one clip which couldn't be moved short of vice grips. The cap continues to taper until about this point where it flares again to the cap ring which has fully when in script and 2037 stamped into it. These tapers give the cap an overall concave shape which is very aesthetically pleasing because it is followed by the shape of the barrel. There's a small step down right here from the cap to the barrel, but then the barrel tapers up to about this point and then tapers all the way down to the end finial, which is a chrome piece of metal, not completely flat, it's a small dome. This shape, when capped, is most pleasing with its gentle swooping curves and it reminds me of the Pen BBS 323, which you can see here in amber. It has that same kind, it doesn't have the convex at this end, but it does have that bulging and then convex at this end. So very interesting curvy pens. But that's where the similarity stops, right there. The pen uncaps with a snap which is very stiff. <coughs> I think it might wear a little bit with use, but it's almost uncappable. It's on there so tight. And capping it again takes a great deal of force. As you can see. And this is where some of my disappointments begin with this pen. After struggling to get the cap off, we are faced with three things I immediately don't like. I know I'm tipping my hand here early, but you won't win this pen if you stop here, so soldier on, dear viewer. We see a small, concave, slick chrome metal section, a very small number five steel nib, and a cap that severely unbalances the pen. Let's leave the posting issue for a moment and look at the section and the nib. The versions of this pen for sale on eBay and Etsy currently have a different section than this. They've redesigned it to be convex in shape. I don't know if uh, this is an improvement or not since I haven't felt the convex shape. This section has an odd step right in the middle of it right there and I can't decide whether this is design or function because it fails in both in my estimation. It looks weird and it feels weird. To top it off we have a very tiny steel nib which is generic because it has no fully wen branding at all on it. This small section and small nib mean that my fingers are now way too close to the paper for to be comfortable for me. A smaller hand uh, would work with this pen, however, because uh, unposted, it, it feels just fine. I found a way around all of this, however, and I'll show you in the writing sample what I do. And there is a typical plastic feed. The section unscrews, and we see a standard international uh, cartridge converter, and this pen will also take standard international short cartridges, but it won't take a second uh, standard international short in the barrel uh, to piggyback as the barrel's too short for that. 
Let's look at the cap posting again, because this perplexes me. You can see that the, the cap actually posts very securely on the back of that pen. You can't knock it off. It actually goes right into that cap liner that's in there. I don't know whether you can see that or not, but uh, it sits into that cap liner very snugly. But all this metal on the cap makes it a non-postable pen, in my opinion. If they made the metal finial, the uh, clip band, and the clip, I mean, not so much the clip because it's fairly thin, but uh, the cap band, all these metal parts, if they made them a little bit lighter, a little bit thinner, uh, you might shed maybe, I don't know, four or five grams. But this cap accounts for fully half of the fully when fully weight. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the Fully Wen 2037 with a Visconti Van Gogh, a Faber Castell Loom, a Parker Sonnet, and the ever present Pilot Metropolitan the ever-beloved Pilot Metropolitan for reasons which escape me. Now let's look at them posted. So here we have the five pens posted and you can see they're all roughly number five nibs in size but the Fully Wen is easily the smallest of them all. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing sample portion of this review of the Fully Wen twenty thirty seven, and this has a medium nib, steel nib, and the ink. is J. Urban Caroub de Chypre Don't ask me how long I practiced that. Do you want Do you want Want Do you want, Do you want to come back to my place bouncy bouncy Here is the test card for the Corub de Cipre. It has uh, quite a lot of uh, gold fleck sparkle in it, which is visible even in a, a thinner line. And here it is with Mont Blanc Toffee Brown and Robert Oster Asterkiza Rot. Let's check the wetness. This is a very wet pen. Now, that may be due to me adjusting the tines on this because I had to really kind of push on them. And it uh, left a small gap. So even looking at it with my loop, I figured that when I first started writing with this pen, it would be very wet. It's not unpleasant, however. It just saved me that step. And as to line variation, there is no pressure. There is a little bit of push, very little line variation. Very stiff nib. Again, typical of a steel nib, especially a, one of these generic steel nibs. This isn't even branded fully win. Let's listen to it right.
This uh, scratches a bit, but uh, I'll just check it again with my loop here. No, it's uh, pretty much in alignment now, but there is a little bit of a scratch, so a little bit of feedback. So it might require a little bit of smoothing, but uh, it's writing a very nice wet line. Very pleasant. And as for some reverse writing, it's very wet and not appreciably thinner. And it's also very scratchy. And as to some quick writing, Again, it's very wet and the feed keeps up very nicely. Now I did mention that I have found a way to write with this pen so that my fingers aren't down here on this uncomfortable slick section and so close to the paper. And that is to hold it back here. And that solves another problem too because when you post the pen, if you write with it down here it's very very back weighted. but if you write with it right here, with my fingers just on the barrel here, this part of the barrel is as wide as some of my more favorite pens, like my Moonman. My Moonman M800 has a, a section that has that kind of a grip, that kind of a thickness to it, which is very similar to this part of this pen and that cap sits right here in the crook of my hand just like that and is now forward balanced so with it being forward balanced here this is now more comfortable to write with um, excuse my terrible writing here but uh, but that is actually nice, a uh, nicer balance for this pen. So there you have it. The Fully Wen 2037 with a pearl. Now, what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? Well, I think I elucidated some of the things that I didn't like about this pen uh, at the outset. Let's talk about the things I do like about this pen right at the uh, beginning here. Um, I mentioned that the overall shape of this pen is very pleasing and the beautiful resin on this pen, the lovely balance of the concave section here and the convex barrel, sorry, the concave cap and the convex barrel uh, leave a really nice line uh, with, this, with this pen when it's capped. So it's very, very attractive. Many of those things that I like all sort of disappear as soon as you take the cap off. Because number one, the cap is difficult to get off, which is one of my bugaboos about it. This metal section with that little step right there is uncomfortable, small, slick, small nib, and the unbalancing of the pen when you write with it like this are all drawbacks in my opinion. But just by sheer accident, I found that holding the pen like this in my hand made it much easier to write with. So I wrote with it for about an hour like this and it was actually very comfortable. And it gives you a nicer writing angle on the page as well. The other thing that you might like about this pen is its price. It's very reasonable. I think some of them are going on eBay for like $18 now or something like this. This was, I think, $13.95 when Joel bought it. <laughs> I still don't like that clipping mechanism. But there you have it. The Fully Win 2037. And how do you win this pen? Well, go through this video and look for the cutaways that I've put in. 
I had to sell my bangles records. I was still working on memorizing all the words. My back is hurting from the chair I'm sitting on. Where's the Tylenol? If I lay down flat on the floor, it usually kind of fixes it. You don't have to give me the name or the title of the film. You don't have to research all that much. Just give me what you think it is. And so there, I haven't done the cutaways yet, so there might be three, there might be five, whatever number. Give me the, the star, the, the TV show it's from, the movie title, whatever you might think about. That, that film from the 90s that had that guy in it, you know, that guy that we both like. Things like that. Don't make it difficult. Don't tax your brain. Just leave a comment. I'll randomly select one comment, and that person will be the winner of this beautiful fountain pen. And you have exactly one week from tonight at midnight uh, with which to add a comment. And next Wednesday, I will have another Fully Wen fountain pen review video of one of Joel's pens, and we'll give that one away as well. And I'll also announce next Wednesday who the winner of this pen is. If you like this video, then please like and subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell to get instant notifications when I post new videos. And that just leaves it for me to say... Thank you... for watching... and that's all she wrote.